Okay, so now that I have collected fruit in my garden, I am ready to make soda bottle wine. The idea of this process is to make a delicious wine with the least amount of equipment necessary. So what I'm using for this is some sour fruit. These are sour oranges that I've picked from the garden. I need some two or three liter soda bottles. I need a lot of sugar and I need unchlorinated water. It's very important that your water is not chlorinated. If you live in a part of the world where chlorine is used in tap water, you either need to purchase some unchlorinated water or you need to put that tap water in a big bucket and let the chlorine evaporate or vaporize out of it for a number of days. Now some equipment that is not 100% necessary but is very useful to have is to have a professional wine yeast. I purchased these on Amazon. But if you do not have access to wine yeast, you can ferment wine using natural yeast, usually using the yeast that are found in the skins of your fruit that you are producing. This is Fermax yeast, yeast nutrient, and this will help the wine come to a complete fermentation, and it will typically end up with a higher alcohol content at the end of the winemaking process. And finally, I have a hydrometer. This will help you measure the amount of sugar in the wine when you make it and the amount of residual sugar left over after fermentation. And with that, you can calculate the alcohol concentration. This can also help you with producing and keeping a consistent product with your fruit wines. When adding the yeast to the wine, the process that we call pitching the yeast, if you're using a dry yeast, it's a really good idea to try to slowly wake up this yeast. You don't want to throw the yeast directly into a really high sugar solution because that might shock it and it may not wake up from its deep dry slumber. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to add some of my unchlorinated water into a small container. Next I will sprinkle some of the yeast into that water and let it slowly hydrate. I'm making a small amount of wine today, so I don't need to use all this yeast. I can save some of this for next time. I'm going to let the yeast sit in this water for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll add a spoonful of sugar into it to start it up on a little bit of food, and then maybe another 10 or 15 minutes, and we should see that this yeast starts to come alive. It'll start bubbling in that water, and then we know that this yeast is, is good and ready to add to the wine. All right, I want all of the equipment that I use to be really clean and I'm going to sterilize everything. I'm going to use, I have a little bit of tap water in the bottles right now and I'm going to add a little bit of chlorine bleach to that. Shake it around, I'm going to soak everything, then I'm going to pour all of my, this is all the stuff I'll be used for cutting and preparing. Also this big bucket down here, if I'm making a really large batch of wine, this is what I'll use. But today I'm going to be doing it in a pitcher and just making a couple smaller bottles of wine. All right, if you use chlorine bleach, it's also really important that you wash it off afterwards really, really well. You don't want any of that getting into your wine because that could end up sterilizing your wine and we don't want that. So um, I don't have a very good sink. I'm living in Nicaragua and my sink's kind of dirty and doesn't work very well. So I'm gonna do this outside with a, with a hose. All right, now for the fun part, we're just gonna start making juice. Again, I'm using sour oranges. I like making wines with sour juices because it's very easy to control the sugar content and the juicing process is going to be a lot easier than if you're taking a sweet fruit juice. You have to make a whole lot more juice to make the same amount. Ultimately, this is gonna be by taste. I want to water this down the same way that I would water down a, basically make like a lemonade. And, um, you can use any sour fruit, limes, lemons, sour oranges. Uh, the very best one that I've ever made wine out of is a passion fruit, the big sour yellow passion fruits. There's tons of recipes online and lots and lots of options.
Oh yeah, don't forget the yeast. Feeding time, little friends. All right, so we're gonna add uh, about 900 milliliters of juice. Next, I'm going to measure in about a liter and a half of sugar. Half teaspoon of Fermax, that's about half the amount that's needed for this fermentation. I'll add the other half later on in the fermentation, maybe in about a week from now. Then I'm going to add about three liters of water, but I'm going to start off with less water just to make it easier to mix the sugar in. <clears throat> the final amount should be around four to four and a half liters, which will be good for two of my three liter pop bottles. You see the little bubbles forming in there? That's that yeast that's woken up and it's eating its little bit of sugar in there. And it's uh, been here for maybe a half hour. And I think it's ready to add to the wine. All right, I'm gonna check the hydrometer reading on this. Put in the hydrometer. I need to tip this so that it floats. That a specific density of about 1.12, or the 16 here, a potential alcohol content of 16% by volume. Um, this particular setup, yeast and nutrient has been generally fermenting to around 14 or 15%. I'm going to add just a little bit more water to this to bring it to that amount so that there's a very small amount of residual sugar when I'm done. And there I have it reading right around 14% potential alcohol by volume. One last optional thing that you can do before bottling this wine is that I noticed that a lot of times I get a little bit of scum that floats up to the top and that tends to be hard to filter off. Anything that falls to the bottom of the bottle is easy to pour off the top, but anything that floats to the top gets kind of messy. So I like to try to just skim off some of that scum it'll be a little bit of this that I lose but I'm going to just pour that into another container another soda bottle with some of my favorite favorite juice leave it for a day and end up with a soda all right now we're ready to bottle these up The last step is very important. After you have these put in the bottle, we are not going to seal the bottles 100%. We're gonna use these caps like little pressure control valves on top of this. Now you can get some more complicated equipment. They have one-way check valves that have little bubblers in them or you can produce your own using little tubes and putting it into a tub of water. I've also seen where you can put a balloon on top of this and poke a little hole in the balloon to let the air slowly out. That lets air out. You do not want to get air into the bottle, but you need the air, the gas that is produced during the fermentation to exit the bottle. If the bottle is sealed completely, it will explode and it will be a major explosion. And so what we're going to do is I can kind of, I'm not going to put this on really tight, but by squeezing the bottle, I can hear that air is escaping from that bottle when I squeeze it, but when I'm not squeezing it, it is sealed enough that air will not come into the bottle. Once this goes into full fermentation, that air is constantly be going to be coming out of the bottle and you can actually hear it hissing during the fermentation process. So that will produce a one-way direction flow of air. All right, we're gonna leave them in our fermentation area 
for a couple weeks to ferment. It's going to be a dark place, ideally around 70 degrees or so. And we'll check back in a few days to see how this turns out. Hey, we're back uh, the next day and we're going to check out. We've got the bottles that we've just started fermenting. And then we have some older bottles back here that have been fermenting for a couple weeks. And we'll look at a couple things. So first of all, notice that these are cloudy and they are now under pressure. And I can feel that this one is pretty soft and it's probably just right, but this one, pressure is a little bit high. See how hard that is? Let's release that pressure a little bit. Listen. There we go. That's about where I want it. I'm going to check a few of my other bottles to see how they're doing. This one here. Okay, now here's a bottle of honey wine or mead that's been fermenting for about three weeks and I think that it's done. So I'm going to show you a couple of the very last steps that we're going to do. Notice that I have filled this to a very strategic position on this so that the hydrometer will work inside the bottle. I normally do not ferment it with the water level up, at, up here. And you can see now why I filled this bottle to the level that I did. Is if I put any more wine in here, I'm going to overflow it. Put the hydrometer in and look at that. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera, but it is reading right at zero. So that means that it has zero residual sugar. It started at 13.5% potential alcohol by volume, so now it is a completely dry wine, and it is at zero percent sugar and 13.5% alcohol by volume. So now that we're done with primary fermentation, we're going to decant this bottle and notice that the yeast is all down on the bottom of the bottle. So we want to get the good wine off the top and leave the yeast on the bottom. Now you could use rubber hosing like this to siphon the top off, but I want to show you the, the cheaper, less equipment intensive way of decanting a bottle. Um, we're going to decant it once after primary fermentation, and ideally we're going to store it for about another month or two and then decant it one last time to have a crystal clear final wine. I don't know if you can see this, but all of the yeast is right down here right now. And most of the clear wine off the top is going in and the yeast is just starting to go in. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to end up with this yeasty solution right here. Now don't throw this away because there's still good wine in there. All you need to do is save this, pour this into another bottle and you can keep that yeast will keep settling. You can keep decanting it. You're going to end up with a bottle of yeast that looks kind of like this. This is after, this is probably 20 or 30 bottles worth of yeast decanted off, but notice the yeast is up to here and there's still good wine on the top. So you can save this last little bit and you can still drink it and it's still delicious wine. So what's the final product like? This is a passion fruit wine that I made exactly two months ago and we're gonna give it a little try. color. Smell is fantastic. Oh my god. It's absolutely amazing. It is so delicious. It's <laughs> oh, I'm speechless. Give it a try. Tell me how it works for you. I want to hear from everybody. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching my channel.